God bless you, and welcome to Expanding Your Mind with the Word of God. My name is Samuel Cedillos, and I am the host of this program. I am currently recording from Los Angeles, California. For those who have never heard of this program, this program is dedicated to the glory and honor of God, to be able to bring His Word of Salvation to those who do not know Him, and also to learn more about Him. In this program, we are going to review things from the Bible, trying to explain it in a simple way to be able to understand more easily. Apart from learning from the Bible, my desire is to be able to listen to testimonies of what is God doing in the lives of believers these days. Now, this is episode number two of season two and is called The Wedding of the Lamb. The version of the Bible that I am going to use is the New King James Version. And I ask you to follow me when I give the scriptures and I ask that you come and learn with me from the word of God. I also invite you, if you can, follow me with your Bible while I read. But if you can, don't worry, because I'm going to read it to you anyways. I still invite you for you to go over the text after this episode and just read them again. Because the wonderful thing about God is that he can reveal to you through his Holy Spirit something even more greater than what I have said. In all truth, I barely just covered the biggest details. But there are so many mysteries and things hidden treasures in the word of God. I am only thus on whom God has had mercy on. But I thank God for his great mercy and love and great kindness that he has towards me. May this program be for the honor and glory of God. May his name be exalted in every language, nation, and every place. Now without delay, let us pray so the Lord guides us and teach us according to his word. Mighty God who is in heaven, praise it be your holy name. There is no God as great and wonderful as you are because you only you are worthy of praise. My beloved King, we come before your presence on this day in the blood of Jesus Christ. We ask that you please cleanse us from all sin. Take away everything that is not pleasant from you. Please forgive our rebellions. Please forgive us in any way that we have offended you. On this day, we come to you because we want to learn more about you. Learn more about your word, Lord. Please take control of this program. And I stand completely aside take over me put your words in my mouth so i'm able to speak about your word i just give you this program in your hands and may this episode be a blessing to every person who listened to it in the name of jesus i ask you amen now let us begin the day is coming when the largest wedding in the history of humanity will be celebrated it is no ordinary wedding and his glory surpasses the glory of the world, or any wedding that has ever been in this world. The groom is a royal lineage of the descendant of King David, who with his own blood paid the price of the bride. All tables are set, all utensils are ready. Now the only thing that's missing is the bride. And the time for the groom to pick up his beloved bride is near. The church is the bride of the Lamb, and now she only waits for her beloved to come for her. To know a little bit more about the wedding of the Lamb, we have to compare it to the weddings they had at that time. Now, what were the weddings like at that time? For that, I will be using the book called Uses and Customs of the Biblical Lands by Fred H. White to be able to explain it to you a little bit more. Now, it was a very common practice that in the East, it was the fathers who chose the bride for the groom. The reason was that the bride was going to be part of the groom's family and because of this, the family wanted to see if she would be suitable for the family or not. Many times, in the East, it was parents who chose and the bride and groom did not marry for love, only in some occasions. And if they married against the parents' will, they often caused problems in the family. Now, now that the parents have chosen a wife for their son, what follows are negotiations to obtain the price of the bride. If a groom has enough to obtain a marriage dowry, or in other words, the bride price, the, the negotiations begin. Afterwards, the father calls a man to, an agent, to act as an agent for him and his son. The man is knowledgeable about the bride price. 
The groom's agent goes with the father or another relative to the bride's house, and the groom's father advises that the agent is going to speak for them. Now, the bride's father then hires an agent for themselves so they can represent them. Before the negotiation begins, a cup of coffee or a refreshment is brought to the visitors, but they refuse to drink it until they finish speaking. The two agents then start talking until they agree on the bride price. When they agree, they congratulate each other, bring the coffee or the refreshment, and take it as a seal of the agreement by in which they have entered. Why is the marriage dowry or bride price given? When the bride's family gives the bride to the groom in their home, they are decreasing the efficiency of the family. For example, single daughters help with things in the family, perhaps watching livestock, working in the field, or just helping in different ways at home. To get a bride, the groom had to be ready to pay compensation to the family for the help that the family will lose. And if they cannot pay the price, they could also pay in services in exchange for the bride. For we see an example in this in the book of Genesis when Jacob worked to pay for his bride. And a part of the bride price also belonged to the bride. The reason they received a share was because if the marriage was a failure, they had a kind of well to support themselves. Father also gave the daughters a kind of dowry as a gift to their daughters. After the price was paid, the bride was betrothed to the groom. In other words, they were engaged. Now, this is different than a promise of marriage because a promise of marriage will be in agreement without formal commitment. And many times these promises of marriage were broken. But an engagement or a betrothal was considered something final. It went even more than a simple promise of marriage because it was a spoken pact. And it was not until after Israel exile that the betrothal included a written and formed document of marriage. Now, how were these engagements made? The two families were united with some who serve as witness. The young man gave the young woman a gold ring or some valuable item or a document saying that he was going to marry her. And the young man said, with this ring or sign, which I am giving to you is as a sign to show that I am reserved you for me, according to the law of Moses and Israel. Now, this isn't the beginning of the marriage. No, this is just when they got engaged. And they will get married until maybe a year or two later. That's when they got married. Now, why did they have to wait a year or two? Well, the groom had to go and prepare a place for the bride in his father's house. Apart from this, he had to have a way to support his bride when they got married. The groom and the bride did not know each other intimately until their wedding day. Now, while the groom was preparing a place to spend the rest of his life with his bride, the bride was also doing something that was very important. And the bride had to take care of herself and save herself for the groom because if the bride did not save herself or take care of herself for the room and slept with another person they will no longer marry now let's jump ahead maybe like a year or two into the day of the wedding when it was finally time for the wedding the groom dressed in the best that he had trying to dress the best possible to look like a king those who could even wore a golden crown or maybe like a crown made of flowers. His clothes were perfumed with incense and myrrh, myrrh. That's kind of a hard word for me to say. His girdle was brightly colored, his sandal decorated with ribbons. And on that night, on the wedding night, even the peasant looks like a prince among his companion. Now for the bride, it was something very expensive that took a lot of time because they strive to make their face bright and lustrous with a marble-like luster. Her hair was adorned with gold and pearls. She was dressed with all precious stones and the jewels that the family had inherited from past generations. And those who were very poor borrowed money or borrowed jewels from their friends. Once dressed, the groom went to the bride's house to pick her up. Before she was picked up, she received blessings from her parents and relatives. 
The bride left her father's house adorned in perfume with a golden crown. Finally, the two leave together and a great procession follows all the way to the groom's house. Because the streets are dark, anyone who went into the procession had to have a lamp or a torch. The guests who do not go with the groom are allowed to join along the way, and they all go together to the wedding party without a lamp or, or torch. They cannot join or enter the groom's house, and they had to be part of the procession. Part of the procession were men who played drums and musical instruments and danced along the entire route. After arriving at the new home, she had her hair done, and she was covered with a veil, and no one could see her face. For wedding guests, it was necessary for them to wear wedding clothes, you know, something nice. The guests praised the bride all night long. After the night, the bride was led privately to a room, then the groom was led there by his friends, and the marriage was consummated. Now, these festival lasted around seven days. Now, we have to ask, what similarities do these customs have with the Church of Christ and what the Bibles tell us about the Lamb? As we all know, God's salvation was for his people of Israel, but since they rejected him and didn't want anything to do with him, he came to those who were not seeking him. This is to say, us, the Gentiles. We live in a time of grace, but that time ends when Jesus comes for his bride. Now, the Bible tells me that God chose each one of us. In Ephesians 1, 4, it says that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we will be holy and without blame before him in love. And just like the father chose the bride, God chose us to be part of the church of Christ. And he even gave a gift to serve him better for his glory. But just as Rebecca was asked if she wanted to go with Abraham's servants to marry Isaac, in the same way, God asked us if we want to be part of the church of Christ. He also asked us if we want to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, if we want to completely surrender ourselves to him. In other words, he asked if we want to be part of the bride of the Lamb, which is the church of God. And just as the bride price was paid in those old days, Jesus paid the price for the church. Now we see in 1 Corinthians 6.20, For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Meaning because we are bought by a price, our spirit and our body belong to God. And the best thing is, it was not for the price of gold. It was not the price of services, but it was the price of his own blood, his own life that he paid for us. Jesus Christ is called the Lamb of God because he was sacrificed, he was wounded, and he gave himself like a sacrifice of sin, for sin for all of humanity. What, honestly, he had no fault in all the sins that I have committed, but to him, even though he knew it was going to hurt, even knowing that some of us would turn our backs on him, even knowing that we might even speak bad things about him, he didn't care. And he put his life to pay the price of our souls. While he was being whipped, while he was being beaten, and his body was shaking with pain, he didn't say anything because you were in his thoughts. So that one day we will have the opportunity to be saved. And as it, it's in the Eastern traditions, as they make the marriage, the groom leaves and prepare a place for the bride. And although I just said it in the previous episode, I'll say it again. We see this in John 14, verse 2 to 4, that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us in the kingdom of God. This place that he has prepared is so we could be with him. And while he, is there, while he is there, the church of Christ is here in the world, saving ourselves for him, separating ourselves from the sins and everything of the corruption of this world, just waiting for him to come back. He already paid the price for your salvation. He already paid the price for my salvation. He already paid it in that cross. And now he's just preparing a, a spot 
you know, he's preparing a place that we could go to, to be with him forever. In 2 Corinthians 11, 2, it says, For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I might present to you as a chaste virgin to Christ. The church of Christ is espoused to Christ, betrothed to Christ, or in other words, easier way to say it, we are engaged to Christ, which means that the church must remain pure without any contamination. When you accept Christ as your Savior, you become part of the church of Christ. And it is a duty of each person to seek God and take care of themselves until the coming of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ must be careful not to contaminate itself with things of the world. Furthermore, the things of the world should not be in the altar where God is praised. For example, we have seen something that has happened in the church and is that it become, let's say, very modern or, ready, or rather very global. In a diff not like, I'm glad it, it's everywhere, but very modern per se. Because nowadays, we see that sometimes in church, they have music that sounds exactly like music that isn't made for praising God. Even in some Spanish songs that I've heard, there were some songs that had the same rhythm as songs that were not meant for Christ, but all they did was keep the rhythm and change the words. And you might say, you know, you're being a bit religious, but let me ask you, how can we be a holy church? If we are offering something that belongs to the world. Because if that music wasn't made for God, who else was it made for? And maybe you don't like what I've said, but that's okay. We have to be true and say what it is. If you don't like it, just reject it. That's okay. Whether you want to accept it or not, that's up to you. But I've told you as it is. Now, how should the bride of Christ act? For the bride, the groom is going to come pick up his church. We have to be washed of all sins, of all contaminations with the blood of the Lamb. And I'm not talking about literally washing ourselves in like going and killing a lamb and washing ourselves. No, that's not what I meant. I'm, it's something spiritual. Because what I'm talking about is that we cleanse ourselves with that, with that blood that was that was poured out on the cross for us. But if we are the same as everyone else in the world, then what's the difference between us and them? If we talk, if we dress, and do everything like everyone else, then what's the difference? Aren't we supposed to be different because we have reserved our soul as a bride of Christ? You see, when Jesus calls us, he calls us to be set apart only for him. Even in Matthew 6, 24, it says that we cannot serve two masters. We cannot be part of Christ and part of the world at the same time. We live in this world, but we are not of this world because where we want to go is not here, but to heaven where our beloved is. I don't know how you are, but I want, I want to just reflect on yourself. Have you been putting yourself apart for Christ? Apart from all the sins? Apart from everything that could contaminate you spiritually? Or are you still trying to live in both worlds when you could only pick one? Um, one thing to note is that after the set time has passed, the groom will return for his bride. Now, the bride did not know what exactly time her fiance will come her groom will come neither does the church know what time jesus will come for her but the only thing that the bride would know is that she had to be ready now in matthew 25 verse 1 through 13 we see the parable of the ten virgins and i'll read it to you then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom were delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight 
a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither, neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. We see in this parable that says there were five wise and five who were foolish. In other words, there were five who were prepared and five who were not so prepared. Now, the five not prepared only took their lamps without oil, but the others bought not only the lamps but oil, but also the vessels full of oil. And because the groom was late, everyone fell asleep. I could easily compare it to the church of today. How there are some in the church of Christ today, people who come to truly see God, and there are others who see God but still have one foot in the world. Is it necess the necessary oil for true believer is the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. A believer must be on fire spiritually speaking. He must be well involved with God so that when Christ comes, he can go with him. And then we see in the parable that it says that a cry was heard saying, Here comes the bridegroom, go out to meet him. For us, it will be Jesus himself who will say, Come to me, my people. And those of us who are prepared will fly to the air and meet with him. Now, we see in the parable that the five wise ones got ready and went out, but the five unwise even asked them for oil, but they said no, because what happens if they lack oil too? While the unwise went shopping, the five entered the wedding and the door closed. Now, let me ask, can we give the fullness of the Holy Spirit to others on the day when Christ comes? It is impossible because each of us must be full. The salvation is individual. Each of us must fight for our salvation. And as much as we would like to save other people, we can't. As much as I would like, I cannot save anyone. Because the only one who saves is Jesus Christ. So let's ask, how is your lamp today? Do you have oil for lighting? Or has your oil diminished? Is the fire inside of you going low? Has the fire inside of you gone down, gone out completely? How is your lamp today? And how much oil do you have of the Holy Spirit? Now, let's ask. If Jesus comes today, would you go with him? I, I don't know how you are, because only you could answer that. And we all know inside of us how exactly we are in front of Christ. Now, if you're out of oil, or if the fire inside of you has gone out, or you have lost interest in waiting for God, now is the time to come to Him and tell Him to give you more of that anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to tell Him, Here I am, Lord. Please let my fire burn so brightly like a torch in the night. Because we see that the five foolish people tried to go to the wedding after the door was closed, but it was too late. The same will be when Jesus comes. The door of mercy, of grace, sorry, the door of grace will be closed. And the only way to be saved is to be killed for, her, for his sake in the great tribulation. But it will not be easy as it sounds. Because certainly the Spirit of God will not be on earth anymore to give us strength. And being an enemy of Satan, being knowledgeable about the word, doesn't mean he will let you die so easily. Let's think about it. He who wants to make sure that everybody loses their soul, if he knows that you stayed behind, you think he will just let you live by in the shadows? You think he will just let you live by and just... Let you hide away somewhere? No, 
he will certainly hunt you down. And who will stop him? If the Spirit of God will not be with us anymore. Who will be there to stop them when they come for you? That's why it is better to prepare today and be ready for when Jesus comes, all of us could go with him and leave the world behind and let the wrath of God fall. And I want to be spared from that, honestly. Now, who is invited to the wedding of the Lamb? We're going to look at another parable, which is in Matthew 22, verse 1 through 14. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son, and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were now willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fat cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized the servants, treating them spiteful, and killed them. Now, for us, that wedding that we are invited to is the wedding of the Lamb. And God sends his servants to every place to invite humanity to come to repent and enjoy what he has prepared for us. And just as the first one did not want to come, so many people do not want to come to the ways of God. But in his great mercy, he comes and sends others of his servants to each person. And he gives the invitation that they come to him and enjoy the blessings and salvation of God. But people don't do it sometimes. They just ignore it. They go home and go back to their business or their work. What happened is that people don't want to put first. They put things in this life first or because they don't lack anything, they don't want anything to do with God. And those who bring the word of God even get despised and mocked on. I want you to know that in the way of God, there is no coincidence. If someone comes to you, God is using them as his servants to call you to him. Everybody is invited. Everybody who has life is invited to the wedding of the Lamb. You're invited. And it's your choice if you want to go or not. Now, over here in America, we have total freedom to be able to preach the Word of God for now. But what happens in other countries? They take the servants of God and they kill them just for speaking the Word of God. And in that day, no one could say that God never gave them a chance. Because even in this highly advanced world, almost everyone has heard of the word of God. Now, let's keep reading verse 7. Well, when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore... Go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. You see, the king's anger was so great that he just destroyed them all. And he said to his servants, go and invite anyone. So that was going to happen while well, we are over there celebrating the wedding of the Lamb for seven years in heaven, this world will be fe feeling the wrath of God, which is the tribulation and the great tribulation, which we will cover in maybe two, three episodes further along. And now God is calling everyone good, anyone bad, to repent and cause them to serve to them, to serve him, and cause them to spend eternity with them. Now, I'm going to read verse 11. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, Blind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. You know, just because God called you doesn't mean you will be saved. 
there is not something that people sometimes say that once saved, always saved. Because salvation is not lost, but you could be lost. And truly, everyone is called to the wedding. Everyone is called to the path of God. But not everyone truly chooses to follow or give their entire life to God. We look at the example of the guest who arrived but was not dressed for a wedding. He was tied up and thrown outside. Now let's compare something with ourselves. There are many times in the life of a believer when one wonders, Lord, is it you who truly called me? I personally have had this when I've asked, Lord, how can you love me? I've been so bad. I don't know how to do anything well. And I know that you call people that could do everything that I do so much better. But by his word, he gives me his answer. Like in 1 Corinthians verse 1, 25 through 29, it says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. God himself has given you the invitation to the wedding of the Lamb. He knows your weakness. He knows who you are. And he knows everything. But he has set his eyes on you so that you may be useful in his hands. He knows even your most deepest, darkest secret that you have never told anybody. He knows it. And yet he still calls you. The Bible says that he put his holy hand into the muddy mud to take you and to use you as an example of his power. Personally, I was somebody who I considered one of the worst people. But even God had mercy on me. And if he takes me out of the filth, it is not that I may go and defy myself, but that I may be pure for him, that I might be separated for him, so that I might be his alone. So if God called me to follow him, it's not so I could live double lives. It's not so I could be with one foot in the church and one foot in the world. It's not so I could be praising God one moment and cussing out with different songs or just my friends in the next moment. No. If he calls me, it's to be reserved for him, to be pure for him, to be separated for him. Not to be separated for him in the world. It's to be separated just for him. Now, God asks us to be pure for him. It is time for us to clean ourselves even more, to get even more firm, and to put our lives even more into the hands of God, so that when he arrives, we all could go with him. You see, the church of the Lord is dressed in fight white linen without spot or wrinkle. That is what God asks. In 1 Peter, what, chapter 1 verse 15 to 16 it says but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written be holy for I am holy Hebrews 12 14 says pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord the church of God must be holy members of the Lord's church must be holy and on that day those who have purified themselves for God are the ones that are going to be raised. Put it like this. When we come to Christ, spiritually, he takes away all our dirty clothes that we have and he dresses us with new white clothes. Now, what happens next is that as we remain in him and that we ask him for forgiveness for every single sin, big and small, he cleanses us with the blood of the Lamb, and those clothes stay clean. But the moment we begin to sin, is like our dressing, that white clothes that the Lord has put on us, begins to get dirty. 
And the more we sin, the more dirty it, the more dirtier it gets. And if we don't ask God for forgiveness, those stains will always remain in front of him. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm telling you this because of the next um, verse. Revelation 19, verse 7 to 9. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He has said to me, These are true saints of God. You heard that? That the wife of the Lamb is going to be dressed in white, clean, bright linen. That means she had set herself apart from everything that could contaminate her spiritually. Just to, well, just to be with her Lord. Now, Revelation 22, 11, 17, I'm going to read it. And it's a bit strong. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold... I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter to the gates into the light, into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride says, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. I want to end with this. You see, I had a dream in February 2023. You know, it sounded like I was walking and I found a flower on the road. The color was such a beautiful color, so vibrant. I have never seen anything so beautiful in my life. And supposedly I had woken up from that sleep and I was telling my mom about the dream. And she told me that flower was from the king's garden. Instantly, I ran out saying, the king is coming. I went to the middle of the road and I started shouting, The king is coming! The king is coming! He has stopped. He has gotten up. He has stepped up. He is on his way. And I looked and he was dressed in white. And then the people who heard me ran towards me and they were all dressed in white. We were all ready to go with him. But on the floor, I see a man dressed in white, but he was crying. But the white that he was wearing was in a clean clothes like we had. The white that he was wearing was dirty. You see, I know that the coming of Jesus is near. I don't know when, but I am waiting for it. And even if I end up dying before he comes, I know that he will take me out of the grave to go with him. Reflect on yourself today. Are you ready for his coming and the wedding of a lamb? Or will you be one of those who are surprised when you get left behind? Do you have oil for your lamp? Is the fire inside of you still on and burning brightly in this darkness? Is the clothes that you're wearing, is your linen white and pure? Or have you dirtied it with contamination from this world and sins? I don't want to be like that guy that I saw on the floor crying. He had white meaning that he knew about the word of God. Meaning that he knew about it. And he was crying because he probably knew that the moment that Jesus came, he would stay behind. So all I could say is 
reflect on your own life. How are you spiritually? How are you in the inside? Are you being truthful to God? Are you separating yourself from this world to be with God? Have you truly chosen to say no to this world and say yes to anything that God says? It all depends on you, honestly. Are you ready to go to the wedding of the Lamb? Or are you going to stay behind for what is to come? And here's where we end for today. As always, there is so much to learn from the Word of God, but we review little by little to be able to meditate on what we have learned. Now, the next episode is episode number three, and we're going to learn about the Antichrist and what the Bible says about him. Now, I have to let you know that the Lord has given me the sense to move faster in recording this program. And although sometimes it's hard for me because of work, I will try to release episodes more quickly. Instead of waiting a whole month, I hopefully plan to do it in two weeks. And I thank you now for your patience and for listening to this program. Now, if you want to contact me, you can send me an email to expandingyourmind2022 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Facebook in the account that has the same logo in this program. We are in different places like YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. You can see all the places to listen to on the Facebook page called Expanding Your Mind. I also want to remind you that these same episodes are in Spanish in case you want to share it with someone who does not know English very well. The Spanish program is called Abriendo el Entendimiento and can be found in the same directories as this program in the same logo but with Spanish words. In the word of God, it says that his people were destroyed because they lacked knowledge. It is good to us to learn so that on the day of trial, we do not fail. And as always, it is our duty to study the scriptures. And for that reason, we receive all the good and discard all the bad in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let us pray to be able to finish this episode for today. God of all glory. I have preached your word on this day as it is written. May the word remain in every heart and may be a blessing for each person. Help us, O God, to be clean and prepare for the day that you come for us. Because we want to be with you. And we want to go over there to heaven to celebrate the marriage of the Lamb. We put all our lives in your hand. Please help us get there. Please guide us and teach us according to your Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, protect everyone who is listening and bless them even more than you have blessed me. Thank you, God of glory. In your hands, I give you everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's continue towards the perfect target, who is Jesus Christ. Now, my brother and sister, and to all my friends who are listening, may God bless you greatly. My name is Samuel Cedillos, and you are listening to Expanding Your Mind with the Word of God. And to God... Be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.